Morning folks, it's Saturday morning and uh, I'm out in the canoe this morning with Andy from Kent Survival. Hey Andy. Hello. Watch out for that tree. <laughs> <laughs> that was a setup. <laughs> so we're paddling out to a little island on the River Waveney um, and we're going to have a, a camp on the island, a wild camp, a bit of a bushcraft wild camp and uh, have a fire, cook some nice food, and uh, yeah, really looking forward to it, it's gonna be good. <laughs> oh no, not again. <laughs> maybe it's maybe it's Norfolk rivers that you're allergic to. <laughs> not pollen after all. <laughs> Just pulling up here, Andy. So we've arrived at where we're going to camp for the night. We're on a, a small island in the River Waveney. Um, it's a little secret island that I uh, used now and again. It didn't take us very long to get here, it was only a short paddle, um, so we've we've just been off and had a little explore of another tributary of the River Wave Waveney, which is nice, I've not been up there before, so that was that was really nice. And uh, yeah, so here we are, we're going to get ourselves set up. Um, I'm going to have a tarp shelter with a, a bivy bag and my sleeping bag in, um, and I think um, I think Andy's going for Hex Peak. Hex Peak, the usual. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna get ourselves set up, um, collect some firewood. So here we are all set up. I've got the canoe forming the back wall of this tarp shelter and a DD 3x3 tarp wrapped over the back of the canoe. Down to the ground, up and over forming a lean-to and a nice bit of uh, shelter for us where we sit this evening. We're going to have a fire just there where the Dutch oven and the tripod is. And he's lugged that thing all the way up from Kent. So we're gonna have a nice stew in that that Andy's gonna to cook tonight. 
It's a beef stew. It was very nearly a rabbit stew. <laughs> but I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> uh, and then I've got a, a bivy bag in here. Um, this is new to me. It's not new. I bought it secondhand uh, off, a, off a forum that I'm part of. Um, but it's a hoop bivy. Seating, you've seen me do that before. That's my, um, my canoe kneeling mat inside a Thermarest uh, chair kit. And then we've got other bits and pieces around. The nice thing about having the canoe there, apart from it raising the tarp up and giving you a bit of extra height at the back, making it a bit more of a usable space, is you can use the canoe to uh, put stuff on. <laughs> you've got a shelf and it's just, um, you know, it's just a good back wall really. So uh, yeah. That's, that's my setup. Andy is over here in his hex peak. You'll have seen him using this on countless occasions. A new footprint. The, the actual official Lux hex peak footprint. So bathtub, whatever you want to call it. Which is uh, better than using a rectangular uh, yeah. one in a hexagonal shelter so you don't get any rain kind of pooling. So it goes right to the back. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, it just hooks onto all the points. There's loads of space in there. That's huge. That's awesome. Oh, good. Yeah. The next job then is to get some firewood prepped and uh, get a fire on the go, I think. So while I've been chopping firewood, Andy's been busy getting dinner ready. What have we got, Andy? We have got a beef stew with uh, dumplings and vegetables. Here's a free tip for you. Cast iron, keep some rice in it, or some tissue, or both. Ah. And uh, keeps it nice and dry. Obviously you've got it seasoned and oiled and whatnot, but yeah, if you're keeping it stored, it's a good way to store it. There you go, cast iron tip of the day. <laughs> so we're gonna get the fire lit. I'm using uh, this Tinder card. You'll, you'll have seen me use this stuff before, but I've, I've not really talked too much about it. Um, I really rate the stuff. You, you buy it in a, I don't know, a package is probably about this sort of size here. Um, I can't remember what it's called, Tinder card, I think, or something like that. And it's basically a wax impregnated card. And I find that if you, if you take one strip of it and just split it like this um, you get a kind of fluffy core to it which takes a spark quite nicely I then like to take my knife and just um, just scrape that and just fluff it up even more so that you've um, I don't know well you can see that so that you can uh, so you have even more of this sort of like fluffy material and that takes a spark really nicely so we're going to be using that and um, Andy very kindly shaved off a bit of his beard, so we're going to um, we're going to use a bit of that as well just to get it going. Nice, nice and quick. Nice and quick. It works as well as birch bark, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's a similar sort of thing, really. I guess. Yeah. Scrape it and scrape it and just scrape and go. Scrape, just scrape and go. <laughs> Yeah, right, the beard let's does. try Andy's beard. Yeah. Mm, it's going. It's going. I just killed it. No. No, like sick man. Alright, so Dutch oven is up to temperature. I'm gonna stick in some oil. The meat is beef, and I um, dusted it in uh, flour before freezing it last night. Mm. And that will thicken our stew. Oh. 
Yep, so that's high enough. It's this fizzing. Definitely a, definitely a sizzle. Sizzle, that's a better word than fizz. I don't know. It sounds good. <laughs> and with Simon's spatula. <laughs> So the meat's browned off, just going to add in some of that veg now, potatoes, carrots and some onions. Just let the heat and the oil get on that before putting in some liquid. Mm -hmm. Secret ingredient, oxtail soup. This is just like Mama makes, and uh, well, it will not only thicken a little bit, but um, kind of instead of a stock, well, it is a stock, I suppose, so to speak. Put one and a half in, that should probably be okay. And I've uh, warmed up some water, so I'm not putting cold water in the Dutch oven. Probably need to add a little more, but it's a good start. Give that a mix. And then we're good to leave this for a while. It's looking good. Get the lid on and forget about it. Forget about it! I'm gonna make up the dumplings for the stew here. I've got a mix of uh, self-raising flour with half the amount of suet fat in there as well. And I've just added in some um, mixed herbs. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit of water in the bag. Seal it back up. And we'll just mix it in. So we've got our kind of doughy mixture for our Nice dumplings. And now I'm gonna get messy. They don't have to be neat. Just little dollops. Let me just put our lid back on and 15 minutes or so, we are golden. Right, I think we're ready to roll. Here we go. Drum roll. <laughs> Plate time. Oh. Couple of dumplings there. Lovely, that looks good. Get you some Ooh. meat and potatoes. That is proper winter food. I'm so hungry. <laughs> Looking like a chili or a stew or something for yeah. winter camping. Kneeling pad, probably melt. Ooh, yeah. mm. Oh, mate, that is good.
Well, it's got to that time of the evening. We've uh, we've had a couple of beers. We've had a, we've had a few laughs, and um, we're now just going to have a, a hot chocolate before bed. We've both got some water on to boil. So um, we'll see you in the morning. Good night. Spam! <laughs> Salt and pepper. So I'm just sitting here and doing a little bit more to a spoon I made last night for the stew. It was a bit uh, rough and ready last night. We just needed something to do the job basically. So I thought I'd just uh, refine it a little bit and tidy it up. The fire's dying down and uh, we've had our breakfast, which was very nice. And um, yeah, just chilling out for a bit really. A whittle around the campfire. Even though it's hardly a raging no. campfire. <laughs> Now I know the purists amongst you will criticize me for using sandpaper. <laughs> uh, I have a friend that carves a bit and um, 
he's he's one like that you know he believes that you shouldn't need to use sandpaper it should all be done with the knife but um or with the chisel so i like a nice smooth spoon so sandpaper it is plus i'm not that good at carving <laughs> I'm gonna wait for that to dry properly now and um, finish sanding it uh, at home. And Andy's made a lovely little scoop. So I think what we're gonna do now is uh, start thinking about getting things packed away, let this fire completely die down so we can douse it and uh, get this island back to looking how it was when we arrived. Well, that's us all packed away. Um, we've done the best we can to make it look like we haven't been here. There is obviously trampled down nettles and the patch where the fire was, but we scraped that and, and sort of covered it over. So there's really very little evidence we've been here, which is good. And uh, yeah, it's been a really nice, really nice evening, really nice day paddling yesterday. Thanks Andy for coming up again. Thank you for inviting me. Been a, been a... Or inviting myself up. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's been a chilled one, it's been good. Yeah, it's been it wasn't nice. Wasn't as intense it? as the last one. No, no. <laughs> it's quite nice when you haven't got you, know, you don't have to worry about there's no pressure. Making there miles. Getting, yeah. yeah, making miles and getting to <laughs> getting to somewhere to camp. Sort of knew where we were going. So uh Yeah, could chilled around the fire one. Yeah, nice. Yeah. So uh thanks for watching. Take care and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>